Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I'm going to show you that government agencies don't need any actual thermometer data to calculate U.S. temperatures. U.S. temperatures have been cooling for a century, but over the last 20 years, government agencies have altered the data to make it look like the U.S. is warming. I've talked about this a lot, and in this video, I'm going to do an experiment where I show you that they don't need any actual thermometer data. The U.S. has by far the best temperature record in the world, but over the past 30 years there's been a sharp decline in the number of stations. In 1989 there were 1,205 stations which reported daily temperature data sometime during the year, but last year the number of stations dropped down to 865. But even though many stations aren't reporting temperatures anymore, NOAA still calculates temperatures for them using a computer model. There were 424 stations in the United States last year, which NOAA calculated fake data for, for all 12 months. This map shows those 424 zombie stations. As you can see, they're fairly evenly distributed around the country. The only areas which don't have zombie stations are parts of West and Central Texas. The percent of zombie stations has increased from less than 5% in 1980 up to 35% last year and the zombie station count has increased from close to zero up to 424. Remember that the definition of a zombie station is that NOAA calculated data for that station in all 12 months during the year. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the station reported no data. Of those 424 stations, 75 of them actually reported some data during the year last year. So I decided to try an experiment. I wanted to see what would happen to the temperature trends if we used only zombie stations. First, let's look at the maximum temperature graph over the past century for the entire set of U.S. stations. It shows a strong cooling trend with last year being the second coolest on record. And this is the graph for the 424 zombie stations from 2019. It is remarkably similar to the graph for all stations. Here's the graph for all stations again. And here's the graph for the zombie stations. The similarity of the two graphs tells me that the U.S. temperature record is of very high quality. You don't need a lot of stations to find out that afternoon temperatures are cooling in the U.S. and adding more stations makes very little difference to the trend. I need to point out again that all of the stations used in this graph were reported as zombie stations in the final temperature data set, but 75 of them actually reported data. That's why I was able to calculate a value for last year. Now let's look at the adjusted data, which looks nothing like the actual thermometer data. This is the adjusted maximum temperature data for all United States Historical Climatology Network stations. It shows a strong warming trend and a hockey stick since the year 1980, which does not exist in the thermometer data. Now I'm going to switch over to the same graph calculated for the set of only zombie stations from 2019. Here I go. Note that the graph is almost identical. But remember that the calculations for 2019 involve no actual thermometer data. Every single one of the 424 stations was estimated. In this slide, I put the final adjusted data for all stations on the left and the same graph for the set of only zombie stations on the right. The trend of the two graphs is nearly identical. What this shows is that NOAA doesn't need any actual thermometer data to generate the adjusted data set. When you're making temperatures up, you don't need any actual thermometer data. This graph shows the divergence between the adjusted data and the measured daily data for these set of zombie stations over the past century. You can see that as time goes on, the adjustments get larger and larger, even though they have less and less temperature data. And this is the same graph with carbon dioxide plotted on the x-axis instead of time. As the level of carbon dioxide increases in the atmosphere, the level of data tampering increases with it. So the moral of the story is, if you want to turn a cooling trend into a warming trend, you don't need any actual data to do it. You simply make up some numbers and create a fake graph which shows warming. Then you pass this graph off to policymakers and get lots of funding in return. Every day Toto discovers new and fascinating things about government climate science. Visit him on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.